Welcome to JHG Woodcraft. I'm Jedi, and today we're going to uh, go through kind of some challenges I've had. Uh, I wasn't even sure I was going to do this video, but you know, I think a lot of times it helps to see that even uh, when somebody's a professional, they make mistakes. <laughs> uh, and, and sometimes it's just silly things. So at least may, maybe it'll also help you avoid some of the same mistakes. Uh, so in this video, we're going to go through, I'm building a uh, cutting board slash charcuterie board type thing for my wife. She's been asking for it for a while. And uh, it's kind of like the cobbler's kids type of thing where uh, you know, I build things for everybody else and she hasn't got the, the advantage in a while of, of having a new built thing. So we're going to be working on that. And you'll find that I run into quite a few challenges, several of them my own making. Uh, so appreciate any comments, like and subscribe, and hopefully this is helpful to you. So grab a drink and let's get started. As with most projects, uh, wood, woodworking projects, you start out ensuring that you've got your lumber dimensioned and flattened out. And so that's what we're doing with this, just ensuring I've got straight edges. You'll notice I kind of put it up against that tabletop there. It's completely flat. That's a zeroed in surface, so that way I can ensure that all of uh, my pieces of wood are flat and I use that just to validate that each time. So we go through, do that, and then of course get the, our cuts down to the right place so everything is sized appropriately for each individual work project. Always being careful to keep your hands not or out of the way of that blade. You may notice from some other projects I've uh, replaced the fence. I'll probably do a review on that as well because I'm pretty happy about the fence. All right, so the next part of the project is just uh, lining up our boards, making sure that we've got the right look and feel. So you'll notice I kind of move things around looking for what's the best look to it. And ironically, that knot right there, I liked the way it looked and intentionally included it. However, that ended up being a bit of a headache for me. Now we're just going to lay in the boards into our clamp, make sure that we've got everything laid out the way we want it. I like to kind of pre-fit it, make sure i got my clamps where I want them, and then we'll open it back up and drop some glue on there. So in this case, since I've got that little bitty piece, I'm going to glue all the big ones and glue them to the little one. And you can glue up both, both sides as long as you've got complete coverage on the one. I haven't found that it's necessary to do both. Uh, somebody want to correct me in the comments, feel free. There's a, another reason why you should do that that I'm not aware of. I haven't run into any challenges. So I glue up the one side, bring them all together. Haven't had any issues. Always been nice, strong, firm joints. As long as you've got that glue completely spread out and uh, your surface is well clamped. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want me to do a review on those Rockler clamps. I've been pretty happy with it. There's some ups and downs, though. So if you all want me to, let me know, and I'll do a review on those specifically. Just let me know in the comments. So I wasn't even sure if I was going to record this this build. Uh, it's a personal one, making a board for my wife. Uh, but I thought it actually, based off of what ended up happening, would actually be a pretty good one. So I... I'm going to show you where I, I uh, glued up my pieces of walnut, cherry, and uh, purple heart. Put them all together. And, you know, do, do the, what you typically do where you got to make sure you get your grains look well and stuff, that, where it's just got that good visual appeal. Well, one of the things it has is it's not uh, in it. And uh, before I milled it, I was worried that you know, it looked a little bit soft on one side. And uh, as soon as I took off just that millimeter, I realized that it's really soft inside. So what I'm going to end up having to do is I'm actually going to dig it out, get cleaned up all that soft stuff. I use the Dremel and, and so I'm going to use a chisel first, pull it out, clean it up, maybe Dremel it with a, a little bit of a sanding wheel, and then fill in that hole with a, an epoxy. So it would probably just do as a, a black epoxy. It goes with this kind of dark look that we've already got going on before we CNC in the overall design. We'll put that, we'll let it cure, 
and then we'll we'll take it through the CNC to finish it. That'll let us continue to have this kind of you know, kind of cool look that, that knot provides, but without the stability issue. Obviously, we don't want soft wood when we're using it as a, uh, a potentially as a cutting board or a charcuterie board. You don't want that you don't want material to start falling apart on you. So that's what we're going to do. So, yeah, it's as you can tell, I'll have to zoom in here, but it is super, super soft. Um, and it didn't. Like it, I knew it was a little bit on one side, but then as soon as I kind of got that past that first layer, it's like, oh, wow, this is going to be a problem. So I'm just going to gradually clean this out. I don't want to take any of the, the good material off. Just want all this soft stuff out of here so that we've got a good surface for the epoxy to adhere to. Then I'm debating on, okay, do I do a black epoxy or do I do a clear epoxy and you can kind of see down in this knot that we were cleaning out. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what I want to do yet. Uh, my initial think, thought is the black because I think this is actually going to end up going all the way through, to be honest, or close to it. Um, and I have a sneaking suspicion based off of where it's at, my, my cut-in design is going to end up hitting it as well. So I think the black would go better with that. If it was just the knot all on its own, I'll lay it out when I'm done cleaning it. Uh, but I think if it was all on its own and wasn't going to get cut into, the clear would be kind of cool. But seeing as how I suspect we're going to be cutting into it, I think the black will look better. Hey. Okay, new thing I'm going to add to the shop is a the bench. I'm going to put a hook on the side of this for my hose rather than picking it up and dragging it around. This is definitely going all the way through. It wasn't until I took off that one layer and I realized, oh, it is definitely going through. So I did that. This was This was solid on this side. But it ain't no more. Party's over. But it's not the end of the world. We'll actually make it into a cool feature versus it ruining the build. Adds a little more labor into it. Um, so I'd be thinking about that if I were building this for anybody else. <laughs> um, but this is an anniversary board for my wife. So, you know, whatever labor it takes, right? Okay, now that I got that void cleaned out, ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of tape over this. I'm actually going to put the back side so the epoxy doesn't stick to it, and then tape over that and tape it down. Uh, we will have to do another finish on this before we're done. That's okay. Upside is, I don't think I've got too much, yeah, that I need to cover on this side. Sauna biscuit. Mm. 
At least I don't need this side of the tape to stick. All right, because I'm going to do this. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now we're going to take another piece. Okay, and so that gives us that seal on this side, and then We'll mix our epoxy up and pour it in here. So we do want, because this is uh, filling a void that is the full width of the wood, unfortunately, or fortunately, it'll look kind of cool when it's done, uh, we do need to use a deep pour epoxy versus like a thin like top epoxy. So we're gonna pour that in, let that cure at least 24 hours. Uh, we're just gonna do, I think a deep black and that should take care of it. And then we'll be ready to carve in our design before we do our final finish. Okay, so we got our measurements, uh, laid those out. And then, so essentially I took three measurements across and three and four measurements, or four measurements across and three measurements down, average those together. So my measurements uh, down, so my depth averaged out to 0.4 inches. My measurements uh, across ended up being an average of 0.65 and then my overall length being 4.9 inches so i take those put those into a resin calculator you can find them all over on the internet you can do the math too but it's easier that way <laughs> so i end up with 0.71 ounces is what i need uh, since i am doing a three to one uh, total boat resin not a sponsor. I will be doing, um, <clears throat> uh, I need to divide that by three. So I've got my uh, 0.71 ounces equates to just a little over 20 milliliters. My measuring devices start, so which would divide out to about uh, the closest thing. If I go whole numbers, would be about eight uh, milliliters for per third, right? But my measuring devices don't go quite that small. If I need to get something that gets a little bit smaller, most of the pores I'm doing are much larger. Uh, it's, uh, it's 10. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna have a little bit of loss, but at least I'll have the right mixture. So I'm gonna do 10 of my hardener and 20 of my, um, my thick set or the resin itself. So we're gonna start out by doing the thick set and I'm gonna put in 20 milliliters of that. I should do this on the hard surface so that it that doesn't flex. Oh, good thing I did that, that was it. Okay. And then I'm gonna add 10 milliliters of the hardener. Actually, before I add the hardener, I'm gonna add in my black coloring. I want this to be a deep black, so I'm probably gonna over dye it. You don't really need a ton of this stuff. Um, and four drops to start out with. Let's see what that looks like. And I'm using these little uh, silicone cups because uh, they're easy to clean up after the fact. So once they dry, you just flip them out, take the resin out. You do kind of have to wipe down the sides because anywhere that didn't get uh, mixed sufficiently between the hardener and the resin will end up with uh, just film on the side of it. So you do have to wipe that off with a like, paper towel or something. Okay, we're gonna add a couple more drops and then we'll add our hardener and then we'll mix for three, three or four minutes. I'll be ready to pour. And in this case, I'm, I'm gonna use a injector to pour it. 
Reason being is I've got some kind of weird angles I want to get in there and be sure I get everything covered. I don't want any holes, any pockets, air holes. All right, and one of the reasons why I like mixing the color in before I add the hardener, because I'm still going to have to add, maybe add a little bit more, is then I can, it seems to, for me, I end up with less bubbles. Maybe that's because I'm just being less aggressive about my, my mix. All right. If you're doing it like that, though, double check to make sure that coloring didn't add enough volume to change your measurements. In this case, I was right at my mark. I'm going to pour this just a tad over the mark. Because the added did put it over just a little bit. Oh, son of a gun. That is not what I want. Oh, well, you all saw that. Hopefully, uh, this will see what the hardener does to my wood. <sighs> Dang it. Uh, well, at least it wasn't the resin, I guess, but I guess we'll see. It shouldn't be too bad. I think it should just kind of soak it in. I'll probably have to let that dry out a little more before I can do a finish. My concern is that the finish is going to end up being a little discolored there. So we'll end up seeing, we'll see what happens. That's very frustrating. All right, so now I'm going to mix for three minutes and then we'll pour. I do want to over pour it just a teeny bit to where it kind of bubbles up. The reason being is I want it to be completely flat when I'm done. And like I said, I can take the, well, I'm going to put it back in the CNC and route off that top layer. Yeah, it all looks about right. Okay, so my lessons learned this time around. I Oh shoot, I think I've screwed up my epoxy. I did screw it up. Okay. This is a 3 to 1, not a 2 to 1. Thought it felt thin. Okay, well, we'll see if this makes it in the video, what I'm gonna end up doing. Soaking as much of that as I can out, letting that dry, and then starting over. All right, we look good. Now, no more plunger this time. We're just gonna pour it in real carefully. I'm gonna do this first. In fact, in this case, I'd rather it be bubbled up just a little bit than to be short. Okay. I think we're good. Now we got to give this some time to set up. Come back and check on it. Six hours, 12 hours, and 24 before it's cured. Before we can do any cutting or anything on that. 48 hours later. So continuing with the <laughs> cursed project, the one where everything's gonna go wrong, it's gone wrong. Um, you can see the uh, resin there on the top. I'm going to go ahead and mill it just to flush the boards out to that and clean up all the resin and hopefully clean up those places. There's where I spilled the hardener, hoping that cleans that up too. I guess we'll see. Um, so we do 
as little as I can do on this side to just get it down. So I'm going to go a tenth of a millimeter at a time. And then uh, we're going to do the other side, same thing. Well, we've begun the period where either this is going to work out really great or it's going to blow up in my face because this is the project where everything blows up in my face. So we'll see. Hopefully it all works well. Well, there it is. I knew something was going to go wrong with this stupid thing. Uh, I was adjusting to do the uh, tool set and I accidentally pushed the zero out button and so it zeroed out and then i had to try and refigure out where zero is and it was not exactly right and that happened yay okay i think i got it fixed for those of you wondering well what did you do to fix it well i put it in step mode and tested over and over and over until it always started in the right spot and kept adjusting that start point left and right or left and up until I got to the right point. Looks like it's doing the right. Well, it looks like I got it now though. Uh, Lee, how frustrating. But yeah, now we're getting detailed work on that rope. Too. Fresh off, off the CN CNC. Uh, did a quick sand, just hitting the, the edges to get some of the frayed stuff that the bit didn't clean up. Um, there are definitely some issues with it. A couple areas where the bit seemed to get a little chewy. Um, overall, I'm not, I'm, I don't hate it. <laughs> it's kind of like me, I guess. Uh, you know, there's some pretty parts and there's some screwed up areas, so... Hopefully, at the end of the day, she'll like it. That's what's most important. Um, and still have some, some sanding to do to clean it up. Burn the logo on the other side. And then uh, we'll put a finish over it. So we're going to hit it with a, several of the sanding papers to kind of shine this up. Get it nice and smooth. We'll get it up to probably a 1,200, 1,500 grit. And then we'll, uh, we'll dunk it in some tongue oil to finish it. There we go. Well, we reached the end of our board video, making this cutting board for my wife. Uh, as you saw, they did have a few flaws in it, but overall she was excited, so I'm excited, right? At the end of the day, if she's happy about it, I'm happy. Uh, on this side, you've got, we've got the, the tongue oil finish, got our carving in there that we did on the CNC. Uh, if you want one of these, just let me know, drop it in the comments or hit us up on the social, social media or our store. On this side, we've got kind of your standard cutting board surface with that epoxy add-in where we had the, the issue with the knot. Overall, pretty satisfied with it. Like I said, the wife's happy, so I'm happy. And hopefully that video was useful to you, maybe help you to uh, at least be encouraged that, hey, everybody makes mistakes or else maybe you can avoid some of the mistakes I made uh, in your projects. So with that, I'm going to have a drink and you all have a great day.